This week, I'm excited to share with you a conversation with a very cool dude, Nathaniel Dunn, who does amazing transformational work with writers, with entrepreneurs, with executives, with coaches, and special forces soldiers. He also runs amazing men's retreats, and I wanted to get him on to talk about men's transformation, which we both believe to be a super important and highly leveraged change point for healing a planet that faces a lot of challenges. Today, we talk about how Nathaniel's experience working with the corporate side of the food industry caused a crisis of soul for him and sparked a passion to make a difference. Plus, what Nathaniel's found to be the fundamental key to changing the unsustainable direction of human society. We also talk about why men feel super challenged by the idea of transformation, even though they long for it. And how might women support their men in venturing into that transformational world and so much more. Now, as ever, you can find the show notes for today and all the links I've mentioned in the show uh, via the show notes at www.beabrillianthuman.com slash 126. This convo goes very deep, so stay with me and let's dive into it. Welcome to the Be A Brilliant Human podcast with me, Joel Young. If you're looking to improve your life, to heal, to grow and mature as an individual, but maybe you found that some of the personal development and consciousness stuff has given you the impression that you need to be super serious and vigilant to get anywhere meaningful or feeling like maybe you're just not up to snuff. Well, this show is here to remind you of your humanity and in fact that that's where your true joy and brilliance lies. With over 25 years of experience in the transformation biz and having developed MPA, one of the world's simplest pressure-free approaches to growth and well-being, if I do say so myself, I'll be sharing tips, steps and insights that'll help you navigate all the aspects of life as a growth-seeking being. On this show, it comes to you with a good dose of humor, maybe a smattering of colorful language, a reminder not to take things so personally, and most importantly, to be kind to yourself along the way. Make sure you hit that follow button, and let's get into it. Hello, and welcome to Nathaniel Dunn. It's great to have you on the show. How are you doing today? Thank you. Yeah, really good. Really good. Thank you. Happy to be here. Well, let's let's dive in because um, my audience may not have met you before. Now, just just to give a bit of background, we've been in a few groups, sort of um, sort of working on our businesses and and sort of looking at our stuff in that way. So we know each other, you know, that way. But for everybody else, who the hell is Nathaniel Dunn, and what are you up to in the world? <laughs> uh, well, I am a coach. I actually started to not think of it like that actually i'm calling myself now a change maker because i'm really interested in change and i'm interested in change at an individual level but because that leads to bigger changes in in the world i see that the trajectory of humanity is in a not a good one at the moment and um so my what i'm interested in is contributing to that in a in a positive way um through helping people it seems to me that when you help people and people kind of understand themselves and know themselves and start living by their values, pretty much always people want to do good in the world. And that seems to me to be the, the best vehicle for change. So that's what I've been um, focusing my life on for the last few years. Um, and what that looks like, uh, I'm involved in a few different things, actually. I'm, I, I work, I'm really interested in sustainability and changing the, sort of economic system that we've got that's destroying our planet. Uh, so I'm, I, I work with a few entrepreneurs who are, who, are, who are using their business as a force for good in that space. Um, that's where most of my one-on-one -on -one work is. I, I love that. Um, I do some work helping people who are at the earlier stages of change, you know, maybe starting their first business or starting a project, getting something off the ground. Um, and I and I run some groups around that, um, and uh, I do some work in the mental health space too, um, which is uh, with a social enterprise that supports military veterans. So that's much more what you might consider mental health work, um, a lot of trauma work, um, which I love and has been a uh, 
huge part of my life for the last probably two and a half years now. Uh, and I'm, I do men's work too. So I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in, um, well, I, I really see that one of the biggest challenges we've got in the Western world anyway is the male culture and that it's actually really toxic um, for men and women but, and, and everybody else. But um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm really seeking to contribute to that too because I think that's a place that can make a huge difference. So it might sound like a bunch of different things, but I kind of think of it, and it's all the same kind of stuff, but applied in different contexts. Yeah, I, I totally relate to the the many things. I've often done many different things, but I find there's normally sort of a, a theme that relates to our own passion that comes through it. So if, if you were to think like in all those disparate ways that you work with people, uh, you know, work with different groups and different areas, what's if you were to sort of sum up the theme of, you know, what you're what you're up to, what you're about, what would you what would you say that is? Just mm. put you on the spot, you know. Yeah, start <laughs> off with the nice, easy questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right in with the difficult one. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think it's about self understanding. Mm. I think that we don't know ourselves very well. Often, we don't understand ourselves. We don't understand how we work. We don't understand how our mind and our body are connected. We don't understand how our thoughts and our feelings interact. We very often don't really know what we stand for. We don't know our values. We often, even if we've got a sense of what we think is important, we're very often not actually living in a way that is aligned with that. Um, and that that was certainly my journey. You know, like figuring out initially trying to figure out my own anxiety, and that then led to me really seeking to understand who I am and what I'm about and what I care about and then going well suddenly realizing well my life actually is really not aligned with that and you know no wonder I feel lost and meaningless and you know I'm just going through the motions and, and I and I realized that that is a systemic problem like we're not teaching kids at school to know themselves mm. we're teaching them facts and figures and information but we're not teaching them about their emotions we're not teaching them about who they are we're not teaching them about you know their innate um self we're, we're not doing any of that really or if we are it's considered like a bit weird and out there and sort of you know left field uh, but i think that that's uh, ultimately the, the root of many 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 of our problems and so for me it's like you know it might sound a bit grandiose i know we've been using we've been exploring that in the last couple yeah. of weeks but um I genuinely believe that the change that is needed in the world right now is a shift in consciousness in, in humanity. We've got all the technology and money and resources that we need to completely change some of these, some of the big problems. And we're not doing it because of how we're thinking about it and how we're thinking about ourselves and what we think deemed to be important in the world and and for me that all boils down to self-knowledge and self-understanding so i think that's the common theme that you know is, is applicable across all those contexts that's and what answer. i'm working on in my own life too you know? <laughs> yeah yeah no it's a really good answer i think that's really it's one of the sort of foundations and I, I totally agree with you it's like it's not something that we're taught um but you know to understand yourself for me, I'll talk about it in terms of self-awareness or becoming aware of what's happening, but it, it boils down to the same basic idea, which is if you know how you tick, how you work, then, or well, if you don't know, then how the hell are you going to know who you are, what you want, what matters to you and how to make that happen? Um, and I, my experience is that we're still running a lot of really shitty strategies to get those things, which can come out in the toxicity that we see. Uh, it comes out in a lot of, you know, psychological self-harm and harm to others. Um, but they're, in spite of that, this industry of self-help and personal development being around for a long time, it's still and growing. It's still relatively small in terms of the human consciousness. There's still a long way to go. I mean, that whole bit about having the, the resources, I, it reminded me, I, I don't know, I saw a program a while ago, like like a few years ago, and it was the guy who invented that weird, you know that thing with, with a, a single ball, you stand on it, hold up, and it 
travelator or something like that all oh, right and, he got, yeah, and he'd yeah. invented that and he invented loads of things he said i've invented everything we need to solve all of the world's basic resource problems and what i've learned is it's not a matter of technology it's a matter of will a matter of actually being willing to embrace those things and deconstruct the structures that are there Mm. And I, th I think you're absolutely right. I love you doing that. Is it, is like if we can help more and more people understand themselves, it's going to be obvious. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a dumb move. <laughs> yeah. It's like when we've got when the predominant thinking in the society, and I, and I think this is cultural because this this is not the case in all communities around the world. I'm talking about sort of the the West, the developed world, if you want to call it that. It, when the when the predominant thinking is that um, success looks like lots of money and growth and achievement and more and that whole mentality, then it makes sense to pursue that, and that's what everyone's rushing about doing. And, and but we know that that's causing all kinds of uh, all kinds of problems. And when you when you start to understand yourself and realise that that stuff is it's only got meaning because we give it meaning. And that actually you can totally redefine success, whatever that is for you. And you can just be, you can, you don't have to play that game. And usually when people kind of see that and they start to really think about, okay, well, what do I actually want? Not what, not, I don't have to go with the indoctrination of capitalists or growth focused mindset. When I, what do I actually want? And a lot of people don't want that. And then they realize, well, I can actually live a totally different life and that that's possible and then when you do that other people see it too and it, it has a knock-on impact and it's like the more the more people who are starting to think like that the less that whole um paradigm is makes sense you know it's just it doesn't it's, it's not the only way to do it and actually we know it's really not it's not working for the world you can't perpetual growth doesn't make sense from a mathematical perspective it does not make sense it's, it's impossible um, without burning everything up, which is exactly what we're doing. But it's also not working for people. You know, we, we've got these record levels of mental health problems. Um, there are more and more people falling out the bottom of the system. You know, I saw it even being away for a few years and um, living overseas and then coming back, like the level of homelessness in the UK was shocking to me when I got back. It was a st stark difference. When you've been away for a few years, it's like, whoa, you can see it everywhere. But it's it's obviously not working, and on many 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 levels, you know, more and more kids with mental health diagnoses and being medicated just to cope with the system. It's like, what are we doing? We don't need to. We don't need to do it like that. And it, and it seems like when you stop thinking that that is what you need to do to be happy or successful, then you, it's quite easy to change actually. But that has to come from inside. Yeah, and it has to come from that understanding. So I'm going to ask a very deliberately pokey question just for fun. So it's going to be one of those conversations. It is. Well, you know, why not? <laughs> it's uh, yeah, why not? So, so are you anti-capitalist then? Oh. <laughs> um, no. So tell us, tell us why um, and what that's about. I have been, I think, but I'm not. Nice. Anymore. That's good. Um, I was in the corporate world for a long time because I thought that was what success was, you know, and I did well in that world. And, um, but then I realized I was ticking all the boxes according to what I thought I was supposed to do. And I had a good job and a good reputation and was making loads of money and was important apparently in that world and, you know, all that. And, um, but we felt totally empty and, meaningless and my lifestyle was really not working for me i felt really trapped um i felt like i was living someone else's life and i and i got out of it eventually after 11 years which was six years ago this month actually best one of the best decisions i've ever made mm. uh and at that point i was like very anti-capitalist um i'd been in the uh, i was in the research industry but the clients that we would look after with with information and consulting with with the big food companies and the big retailers supermarkets um 
And the more I saw the inside of that industry, the more jaded I became because I saw just how toxic it is, how profit trumps everything, how, you know, all the all the marketing spiel about uh, being green and sustainable and low impact from all these big companies, you know, it's bollocks, it's marketing. Um, they know what they're doing and, and uh, they don't really care. And, and I saw that and, and that was really confronting. So when I came out of that, I was like, Capitalism is a problem. Big business is a problem. It was totally anti-business in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, it seemed like that was the, uh, the 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 problem. But but then I'm in business for myself, and I realised no, well, that's possible because I'm in a capitalist society where I can you can literally start a business today. You can go and register on a company's house. Um, and you can start a business and, and you can start creating something that doesn't exist. And I, and, and I began to see over time in, in my business and in, increasingly with clients as well, like you can, business itself is actually a really powerful vehicle for change. Mm. Like if you can get the economics to work, if, if you can find a way to make money by solving problems, you, all the problems get solved really fast. Um, and and that's only really possible because of the, the free market. And so I think that the capitalism itself is it, it is powerful, but it's when it's completely unchecked, that's when it's a problem. You know, when it, when these companies can um, produce toxic materials, you know, I think of the food industry, most of the, 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 the plastic problem, which is a huge problem, in the world, you know, there's microplastics now have been found in the top of the Himalayas at the bottom of the ocean inside human organs. Like it's a huge problem it's, and it's going to get worse. We're poisoning our own food chain from the bottom up, which is just so short sighted. Most of that disposable plastic is coming from food companies. Um, and, you know, that that's because of the economics of it. Um, and well, I kind of, I kind of, um, a, I think I always trust somebody who's been to both ends of the polarity. I think it's one of the reasons I ask the question is because, you know, we, we live, in my opinion, in such a predisposed to polarity kind of world. Mm. Um, and so you start talking about the corporate world and those things, and it's easy for someone to jump into their mind and go, oh, he's anti, that's why I asked it, he's anti-capitalist. Yeah. yeah. But what, what you described there, I think, is, is kind of an important reality of being a human, which is often if you have a bad experience or, or you like, in this case, you like, you, you witness stuff that just made you feel like this is shit. Then I think it's a very natural thing in the balancing act to swing the pendulum. Mm. And there's a, there's a gift of swinging the pendulum. If you're stuck in one polarity, you swing the other side, it kind of energetically balances it out. But you also get to see the other fundamentalism. The, tr- the trouble is we get stuck in one of those things. But the fact that you've come back and gone, oh, okay, yeah, I've had my kind of, Argh. yeah, and then I've got into a state of balance. And then you get into a place where what you're talking about, which is actually th- the system has at least, at least the idea of the free market has the potential to do everything that we need in order to be, to live as a better community on planet Earth. And so then it comes back for me back to what you started talking about, which is, but that requires us to understand ourselves and make yeah. the moves and understand why. Um, cause, cause those systems, they're built on the same fundamental ideas that we run our lives for the most part in, in the unconscious world, you know, profit could translate to, you know, success or, um, or status or those kind of things. But ultimately when we understand that that's when we re- like, we can understand it. That's a bad idea. But to go from that really, really fucking is a bad idea <laughs> enough for me to change it is, is kind of a big deal. So that's kind of, yeah. I, I love that you've got that piece of, um, I was gonna say balance, but it doesn't sound quite right. The perspective of the wider view and experience yeah. of trying out both sides of the story. Yeah. Yeah, I think I just there's there's huge power in being passionate about something and being angry, you know, and being and for me feeling guilty because I was in that industry for so long and feeling like shame and guilt and 
like that's a powerful thing because it can motivate you to change so i'd love to get into the the men's work that you do that that intrigues me we talked a bit about it before we hit the record button i did notice you did mention the veteran thing you know it said you were on your you know on your site it said you work with special forces soldiers i thought there's got to be a story behind there um and and also working going back to what you said about understanding ourselves i know you've got a retreat coming up in um in july this year and i imagine you run it what annually or whatever it's but it's yeah, it comes, yeah. um to get men together because as you said before the call is like um part of shifting consciousness and certainly working to help the system change men are a big part of that so just tell me what what it is that where you're coming from with the men's work that you do why do you do it what's your intention there mm. yeah um it's been an evolution really i i started doing it so i'm in my third year now of doing it and i started doing it because i went to something similar i went i went to a um a men's group that really helped me mm. uh and it i i don't know what it would be now four years ago i guess um i started doing some work i was being coached by a guy called Ankush jane who's um a guy really successful coach in the three principles world and which is sort of psychological spiritual understanding kind of thing for anyone who doesn't know that um and uh when i signed up with him to do some one-on-one -on -one coaching he said to me uh, uh, you, you should come to this event that i'm doing uh it's called the powerful men's immersion and and i was like all right and i I'd, I'd sort of seen him mention it a little bit on social media but i had no idea what it was really and um he said trust me it will help you in your life and in, with your family and with your business and your relationship and all the stuff that i've been getting help from him on and I took it on trust, really, and I didn't really know what it was. And I and I went to this thing, and uh, it was a group of men. I think it was twelve people over four or five days. And I remember when, right at the start of it, he said, um, "Leave your ego at the door. No judgment. We're all equals. Doesn't matter." what your background is, how much money you've got, how many notches you've got in your bedpost, blah, 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 all the stuff that we, as men, um, compare ourselves against each other with. Leave that and um, you bring whatever you want to bring. And there's no set content. It's not a training course or a workshop. It's just us for a few days. And I remember just <laughs> sitting up in my chair and thinking, oh, God, no, like, what is this you know i'm feeling really uncomfortable about that because at that point i had never been in an environment like that with men only men without some kind of agenda without some kind of task that we're doing or sport or drinking or activity or something you know and it was just no we're just going to be here and we're going to listen to each other and we're going to talk and pool that was really uncomfortable mm. um because i was like i didn't know how to play that game you know like what how do you show up like this <laughs> which sounds really simple doesn't it but it's when you've never been in that environment it's like i, I i'm not sure how to be and um that in itself was was massive for me anyway did that for a few days had some really powerful conversations um you know bumped up against some uh edges for me my my comfort zone um definitely sharing my thoughts and feelings and opinions with a bunch of men was not my strong suit and and it really helped me and th what really impacted me was after that so i was living away at that time in australia and i'd come back for, for three weeks and that was the first thing i did got off the flight went straight to this event <clears throat> and then after that I was spending time with my family and, my, and there was some pretty heavy stuff going on with my family at that point. My dad was really not well. Um, my little nephew had just been diagnosed with a super rare condition, been told that he's going to be disabled for the rest of his life. 
And, um, you know, my family were not in a good place. Everyone was upset and grieving and stressed and, you know, and I spent a couple of weeks with them and, and, um, independently and without me asking anything, uh, at some point later in that holiday, both my mum and one of my sisters said to me from, from nowhere, they said, you know, there's something different about you this time. You just seem different. You're more grounded. You're, you're not here as like the hero and the brother and the son trying to fix everything. You're just listening and, and it's really good and, it, and it's been really helpful. And they thanked me. And I, that was massive for me because I, really, I, I wasn't that aware of any particular difference. I was, certainly wasn't intending to be different. But it was helpful. And I, and I remember at that point, it sort of registered and I went, there's something here. You know, there's something in this. And I can do that too. I could lead a space like that because it's not about how magnificent I am or how much knowledge I've got. It's not about transfer of information. It's, it was almost the opposite. It was like creating a space to just be and listen and share and explore and understand you know our thoughts and feelings and stuff and and i realized wow i could i could do that and and i committed to myself i'm gonna run one and then i sat on it for a whole year because i was too scared <laughs> and uh, and then i was leaving australia i knew that i was going to leave the next year um to come back to uk to support family and i said to myself I'm like, if i leave this place and i haven't done one i'm gonna regret it and, and so it kind of forced me into action, really, or I forced myself into action. And I did, and I ran one a couple of weeks, one of the last things I did um, before I left Melbourne. And, and, and I ran one with a small group of people over a few days. And similar thing happened. We had this incredible experience. Um, it was, without wanting to sound woo-woo and wacky, it did feel like a spiritual experience to me. I had no... I had a rough structure, but I had no set agenda. I had no set plan, which was, I've never done anything like that. Not for three days with no plan like that was pretty confronting. And it, but it just emerged and it unfolded, and, and it was hugely powerful. All the guys had, were massively impacted by it. Um, and a similar thing happened the week after that. It was my leaving party, so I was leaving the country after seven years, and uh, I just had a party at my house and the barbecue and stuff, and. Some, a couple of the guys who came to the event came to the party and one of them brought their wife and one of them brought their girlfriend. And independently, without just from nowhere, at some point during the night, each of those women came and grabbed me and got my hand and said, can, can we just have a quick chat? And I was like, yeah, right. Took me down the side of the house where it was quiet and away from everyone. And um, they both said, I can't remember the exact words, but both of them said something along the lines of, thank you. You know, we don't know what you guys did on that weekend, but he is in a different place now. Yeah. And that's really helping us. And, and I, I was, it was a bit emotional, to be honest, because it, that, it, 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 I realized at that point how important this is and how it's not just about helping those guys, that helping anyone is helping everyone else in their lives, particularly the people that are close to them. And that was huge for me. And I realized at that point, right, I need to do more of this and this is needed. Um, and then I came back to the UK and purely by chance, uh, I wasn't looking for it. It kind of found me um, through uh, a guy called James Tripp. I don't know if you know him. Um, the guy who's in the hypnosis world, um, spending some time with him on a, on a training course. And, and he was telling me about this organization that he was working with that was supporting military veterans. And, and he said to me, you know, it's, it's been an, an incredible learning experience because you're dealing with people who've uh, had some really horrific experiences. You're dealing with people who've done some really amazing but terrifying things too. And he said, you know, you never know what you're going to get. And it's been a, from the perspective of uh, developing skill in the art of helping people to change, it's been amazing. And I said, oh, I think I'm at the point where I'm ready for something like that, you know, push the boundaries a bit. And he said, oh, I'll put you in touch. They're always looking for people, good people. And I was like, okay. Anyway, a few weeks later, I'm, I'm working with these guys and um, doing some coaching for them. And all of a sudden, I'm sitting with, some seriously tough dudes like 
soldiers, a uh, lot of Royal Marines, some special forces guys and women as well. Um, but like strong, powerful, um, fit, very masculine kind of men who've been in war zones, you know, and, um, and they were struggling with the same stuff. They were, uh, you know, didn't understand themselves, unable to really um, understand their emotional experience. We're experiencing all of this kind of stuff, post-traumatic stress. You know, that's pretty common if you're in a if you're in conflict. And and I began to do, and, and often very, like at the extreme end as well. Like people were often suicidal. They'd often tried to kill themselves more than once and failed, thankfully. Um, and I start, I got a window into that world. And I began to see that the, the challenges they're facing are no different to the challenges that a guy who's, you know, living a life that's got no meaning and might be being successful, like we were talking about before, but just, you know, not happy and not content and not, not knowing really who they are and what they want. Um, I began to see it. It's like, even though the context was different, the underlying sort of problems, if you want, it's not really problems, I don't want to call it that misunderstandings let's say or lack of knowledge like that it's the same and it's just showing itself differently because they're doing different things in the world and um i just began to really get a sense of like this is actually way bigger than i thought it was in terms of how big it is as a problem in the world but how much of an impact it is and and you know, how, how much of a knock-on impact it is because quite often with with the, that social enterprise work, quite often we were dealing with um, the partners and the wives and the children as well. And I've, I've coached widows where guys have killed themselves and, you know, I've been there to help pick up the pieces with with the family afterwards. And I was like, wow, this is, this is huge. This is absolutely huge. Um, so that's kind of what, that's why I started doing it. That's what got me onto it. Um, and I was going back to these groups. I was going back to these groups every year too. So I was kind of doing the work for myself too and, and feeling the benefit in my own life. You know, and I, I just began to realize, wow, this is, it's a high leverage place to focus on in a way. Like if you want to help, if you want to make an impact in the world. It's one way that has quite a big knock on effect. Um, yeah. So that's really where it came from. I love that you're doing it without an agenda. I mean, anyone who listens to this show knows i bang on all the time it's 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 core to non-personal awareness and mpa i call it the agendaless way that the power of having no agenda i love your kind of internal response i don't know what game to play because that speaks straight to the format that we've got is what's the game how do i play it what's the formula um and agendalessness will confront you with that time and time and again and if if you step into it there's there's a magic and freedom is my experience of it um and then so with with the men's groups um one thing that and we talked about this the other day anyway but but i want to bring it up here is predominantly in the personal development world it's kind of a pareto's job it's 80 20 at best where 20 percent of the people that are willing to come down this road are men that's on a good day in my experience so and when we were talking about this the other day, you know, we talked about the, that there's kind of a desire, there's this conflict of desire to come and do the work because there's this recognition, I think, within men. It's not something's off and I don't know how to, how to fix it. And then the absolute terror of being confronted, just like you said, with, a, with going and sitting with a bunch of guys, what the hell does that mean? Yeah. So how... Now, if, if there, there's a guys listen to this, and it's, I think it's really important for, for women to hear this as well, that maybe, maybe, so maybe if there's a man in your life that is, um, you can see it in them, for example, say you're a woman, you can see it in, in one of the men in your life. Um, it's important to this. Or if you're a man listening to this, or you hear about this, and you go, well, it sparked something in me, but fucking hell. What does that mean? What would you What would you say to them? Mm. Um, yeah, it's a good it's a good question. Um, and I, I'll be honest, I'm not sure I've got. I'm not sure I've found a 
a, a great answer for that. Yeah, that is the biggest challenge that I see in this. It's not that there isn't a problem to solve, and it's not that there isn't a solution. It's just that they're having people show up for it and be open to it. That's actually the biggest challenge. Once they're there, you know, it, it's great, and and and, it, and change happens, and it happens really fast, and, and it's usually way easier than than people think. Um, it, it's it's safe, you know. Mm. Um, but it's the part before that that's the biggest problem and, and well that's the biggest challenge and you know like we talked about the other day um, the w- women in our world see us so clearly they know they mm. know they want they want us to they want us to do the work they want us to understand ourselves they want us to just be happy they want us to be at peace they want us to be able to communicate what we're thinking and what we're feeling without guilt and shame and all the stuff that men carry with anything to do with emotions um i talked to a load of women last year i did a i had an opportunity to talk about this in a in a community of women and i'd never talked about it to women in that way and i didn't i didn't know how to talk about it um so i did a research project and i i reached out to um a bunch of women in my world and and just say you know asked asked for their input and asked for just their perspective on what's happening with men and without and i'm not and I'm still doing that. I'm up to nearly 40 women now that I've sort of interviewed about this. And without exception, they will express the sentiment of like, oh, thank God, you know, someone's doing something. <laughs> yeah. And and huge support from women, you know, huge, huge, huge support. So many women say, oh, I really want my husband to come. I really want my boyfriend to come. I wish my brother would come. But he won't because he he's he's not open to it or he's, you know, the natural response to men is oh, I'm fine. I don't need anything. I'm not broken. And which I get, cause I've been that guy too, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got this. I've got this. I've got this. It's like a very male perspective, isn't it? Like show no weakness, show no fear. Um, don't express any, uh, any sense of lack or anything like it, it's, I've got everything I need, even though, the evidence is showing in the, the world because you're not happy or you're drinking too much or you're not getting the results you want in some area of your life, even though the evidence might be blindingly obvious that, mm. that things aren't really working. Um, there's this idea of like, I'm, I'm fine. And, and so for me, I, I, I don't see this as like fixing broken men or something like that. I don't come to it from that perspective. I think we're all fine given what we know. We're all doing our best. We're all um, we're we're all showing up given our current level of sort of knowledge of ourselves and and who we are and what we're about. Um, but there's always there's always a deeper there's, there's always a deeper perspective, and that doesn't stop. Like I've been running these for few years and been going to them for even longer but it's not like i'm here going like i've got all the answers now and i've got my shit together and i never i never get stressed and i never make mistakes and everything in my life's perfect no way like i i'm on the journey too and i don't think it ever stops no and i think that's okay like that's some that's that's a good thing it's actually a powerful thing to be open to self-growth that doesn't make you weak that makes you strong that 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 it's not the easiest route. You can kind of keep your head in the sand and, you know, gloss over it and yeah, 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 no worries. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, so, that's so you, you've been easy. that guy. You've been that guy, right? The, the guy that is like, fuck that. No, no, I'm fine. Everything's good. You know, yeah. that's, that's sort of bog standard guy mode that we learn as boys. Right. Yeah. And, you know, listeners on this show predominantly women and i'm imagining in my head that one of the things they're asking i'm imagining they're agreeing going yes please help our men and they probably ask themselves how do i help my men yeah. how do i encourage them to come along and this is where we go back into we misunderstand we use shitty strategies and then i've certainly seen times when the, the approach to helping me in my personal life to get over the stuff is to emasculate belittle criticize yeah. and other things that are, that are not good strategies all in the name of help and all with the best of intentions so there are ways that uh, so i guess that the question that fascinates me i don't know if you have the answer or not because it's a tricky one is how can um 
if if there's a woman with a man life because she can see because as you said see him clearly more clearly than he can see himself what <clears throat> could be a way that would 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 be something he would respond to or would help him get to the next step yeah. if i had the answer to all these questions I'd, <laughs> things things would be things would be different um it's a really 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 good question and I think it's contextual. I think it's dependent on the person. I don't think there's one answer to it. Um, but I do think, I think the idea, like the couple of the big sort of uh, objections, if you want to call it that, reservations that men have is one that I mentioned about, um, you know, I'm not broken kind of thing. Um, and the other one which comes up a lot is is men thinking that them going off for a few days or spending money on themselves in that way and putting in that time is is somehow selfish and that that's them not being a good provider or good husband or partner because it's they you know they they put it in the same bucket as like going on a stag do and spending 500 quid and coming back with a bunch of regrets you know <laughs> it's like <laughs> that's how that's how a lot of men think it you know it's like it's a selfish thing or they think of it as like it's some kind of like self-help group fight club style where we're all going to hold hands and cry and they're like god that sounds horrendous and and it's not that either so i think the communication of of it is one it's um it it doesn't make you weak to do something like that it's actually a really powerful thing to do um that is safe you know it's not about it, it's not that whole like i need to tell you every dark secret that i've ever got it's not that either you know it's you, there's some vulnerability required sure but it's not um it's it, it's judgment free that's the thing that i think a lot of men don't really understand because we, we just not we don't we're not used to those environments now anytime you put even two men in a space, it's already, you're trying to figure out where you are in the hierarchy. That's just innate in men, not just in us, in other animals too. It's, that's pretty normal. And it's like getting past that and going, no, it's not, it's not going to be that. This is not like who's the best man. You know, it's like we're all equal. It's just a place to come and be and, and, and learn and explore. Um, and I think, yeah, just not, not coming to it from the perspective like you need to go to this yeah you know, that, that doesn't that's, help that's you. the worst that's that's yeah I, I've, I've been on the receiving end of that so if i put myself in my shoes back then and think when i was terrified to do this kind of work and it was any of this it wasn't even just men's group it was just to doing this kind of work um i'm kind of asking myself because we don't know the answer right so let's put ourselves in the shoes of ourselves back then what would it um what would have helped us to me i know what didn't yeah. help which is that kind of any any implication that there's something wrong with me just is where I'm already beating myself. So we're sort of thrashing at an open wound. Yeah. That's not going to help. I think my, my experience, and again, like you say, it's different for different men, different personality types, but anything that would help me feel empowered in the decision, mm. like it's my decision and I'm free to make it, um, would have given me at least more opportunity to say yes to it if i wanted it i think permissions really important again certainly i'm talking to my own personality type in a, in a relational dynamic when i was much younger i think i was raised um where there was kind of that there needed to be permission for me to do things for myself or mm. agreement to it um and even if and, and even if I was told, yeah, yeah, it's fine. My experiences taught me not to trust that because there was going to be a trick down the road. Mm. Now that's like kind of unique to my, or well, not unique, but that's that's one of my paths. So I know for me, I would have needed like lots of reassurance that not only is it an okay decision to make, but it's supported and and there's not yeah. going to be a there's not going to be backlash from it if it means mm. I change. So I think a lot of reassurance in the permission yeah. was important to me. I don't know about you, what what I'm just sort of throwing things out here, but what would have helped you? Um, 
I think it, it's it's changed as time's gone on for me. I think initially the thing that actually got me into even being open to some input was a really uncomfortable experience. Mm. Um, I was struggled with social anxiety for years and years and years, my whole life um, until I sorted it out. And, you know, was in this weird situation of loving people, really always connecting well with people, always having loads of friends, always um, creating good relationships wherever I went. Not So not struggling with connecting, but you put me in a group of people, even like three or four people, and I would start to get uncomfortable, nervous, anxious, super self-conscious, all of that. Um, and But it was so normal for me that I just, you know, I didn't think anything of it. It's just like, this is who I am. I just thought I was shy. I've been told I was shy since I was a kid. So like, I'm shy. That's it. And therefore don't think about it anymore. Just get through it, you know? And, um, it was only when I'd been in the, my old job for a long time and doing lots and lots of presentations and public speaking and running meetings and like being confronted with that every day, every day, every day. And it's just exhausting me. Like, and I, I feel like I got away with it for a long time without any major wobbles. But then at some point I had a panic attack in a work meeting. I totally lost it. I just couldn't, couldn't like my body stopped working. I couldn't speak and I, I didn't know what's happening. And then I freaked and then my you know, heart went through the roof. And I'm, in, I'm there with clients and my team and it's, it's awful, like super embarrassing. Um, I was absolutely shocked and ashamed by it confused had no idea what it was but i remember having that thought i never ever want to have that happen to me ever again and that then prompted me to go and seek some input and recognize in myself mm, that's not cool like I, I want that to be different so that was the thing that got me for, to first invest in understanding myself first yeah uh, 10 years ago um and and then after that, and and having and resolving that really quickly, like within a couple of days, which you know I, mean, I was thirty two at that point. Imagine you've been like that your whole life, and then like in a weekend it's gone. But right. Utterly life changing. Can't begin to communicate what that was like for me. It was really like someone just turned the lights on. You know, it was huge. Um, after that, then it became a very different thing for me because I suddenly realized, no, when you actually spend time and energy understanding yourself, good things happen. You know, my, my career, I got, I started to enjoy public speaking. I'd hated it my whole life and I was doing it almost every day in my job. All of a sudden I, I learned to love it. You know, and that, that was great. Um, it helped me to express myself better. It helped me at work. It helped me in my relationship. It helped me in, I was big into martial arts. It helped me with physical stuff like martial arts and fitness. It, like so many knock on things then came from that, that then pretty quickly after that, I was like, no, it makes sense for me to invest in myself and go and do six month courses or go on a retreat for, you know, a few grand and spend a few days doing this stuff. It stopped being like fixing problems. I just realized, no, this is actually there's so many benefits that come from this, you know? And that, so now that, when I think about where I'm going to um, put myself and invest in myself, it's, that's where I'm coming from now. It's like, I'm already sold on the idea that it's a good idea. It's yeah, just, it's kind of different. Once, like you say, once, once you've done it, once you've burst that bubble, it's like, oh, duh. It, it's, that, it's that getting through the hurdle. But I think where we where we got to is that there isn't well a there's there's never going to be some kind of formulaic answer, but maybe the best thing that we can suggest is is again going back to having no agenda, is just asking, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, ask him, you know, how can I support you, and and then actually listen yeah. <laughs> to what he says. God forbid, and even be willing to let him not go, even if you think he really should. Yeah. Um, that, that that's been my experience because then then it sort of tends to come back and he might think for himself he might not but that but having no agenda is it can be tough when you can really see something that yeah. will help someone but that's that's the challenge but maybe just ask him what do you think what do you think yeah i think you know I, and i've learned this the hard way um you can't force someone to change you yeah. really can't and it doesn't matter how good i am or you are or whoever the person is to help it doesn't matter you can have the 
top person in the world to to help someone if they're not open and willing to go there it doesn't matter it's like water off a duck's back like it just doesn't you know it doesn't work like that when you're coming when you're talking about you know stuff so you you can't make someone go and sit in the chair like it's not it don't, it's not helpful and to be honest from my perspective when you run in a small group i wouldn't have someone like that in the group anyway because it doesn't you know it, it doesn't help the dynamic so i always make sure people are kind of ready for that um but yeah just just making it safe i guess one of the things that i'm increasingly doing on that front is just being more vocal in the world on social media and when i'm talking to people about my journey into it and other people's journey into it and just sharing stories rather than like you should go it's just you know talk like what i just did i just told you something that's quite 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 uncomfortable and yeah, you know, yeah. quite personal but it's true and uh, i'm a better person for it my whole life is completely different now and i can talk about that with complete openness and honesty because it's just what it's just what happened and i i find the more i do that the more people hear that and they hear where maybe they're stuck or where something's not working they're like mm, yeah i could maybe do with a bit of that you know think, what, sharing what, stories helps a lot you just touched on something i think is really important actually which is you just told a story which is pretty vulnerable and personal and exposing right and interesting as i think well my experience of it was it was normal and that's that's a really that's powerful mm. that you're willing to do that to sort of stand in that energy of it's perfectly normal to be vulnerable and talk about your shit as a man to me is one of the biggest things i mean that's we've seen many things that were considered taboo or bad um when they get onto netflix at some point suddenly they're normalized and it's okay now when it wasn't before it's like just yeah. just by seeing it more seeing that ex the expression of that is is super powerful yeah so i think um i i love that you you do that yeah i think it's the only way to be honest Mm. I think that's what kind of real leadership is. It's not telling people, it's just showing yeah. people by yeah. by just being it. You know, like kids kids don't learn to walk and talk because you teach them how to walk and talk. They just observe <laughs> their parents doing it and they soak it up and they get it, they model it and they take on those skills. And I think that's the same thing. You know, the more men who are talking about this stuff, the more the, the safer it is for other men to start talking about this stuff. Yeah. And in a way, that's the only way to go about it. Really, is to go. Look, I'm, I'm okay with it, and and I'm just going to share. And I, don't get me wrong; I feel quite uncomfortable doing that sometimes. And I'm becoming more comfortable with it over time. But like, it's still a bit edgy sharing deep personal stuff. It is, yeah, and and, and especially publicly. Um, but it's powerful because that's what people resonate with people hear it and they're like yeah i get that whereas if you're there you know and i i, I think the personal development world has got a lot to answer for in this regard you know there's a lot of people who are out there you know looking like and giving off the impression that they've got everything sorted you know that their their life is perfect and, and it's all very you know look at me because i've got all the answers and i that actually i think detracts from this kind of work because people like well i don't feel like i've got that so therefore that person's better than me and that's i feel intimidated by them so then i'm not gonna why would i go to their event or buy their course or read their book or whatever it just feels scary whereas when you're like being honest and just like i'm a human you're a human too and i fuck things up sometimes and i've made some horrendous mistakes and i've damaged relationships and i've you know i've done things that i wish i hadn't and you know that's life isn't it and but that doesn't mean that you can't move past that and, and i think that makes it safe for the people they're like oh thank god me too <laughs> and now we can talk <laughs> as equals you know we're not yeah yeah about me better than you or you better than me it's like, much better so we're yeah. coming to it's just time. honest i think it's just honest yeah no it is it's honest and i, I just is. think it's it's embodying that energy so we're coming to time nathaniel yeah. so i'd love you to tell people you know how they can get a hold of you you've got a couple of websites your retreat's called isle of man are you actually living on the isle of man or, you, or is it just like a 
No. It's a play on words. Um, it came from, so the Isle of Man is a collaboration with uh, an amazing guy called Rob Lawrence, who was a client of mine, became a friend and then a business partner. Um, and he's got, he he's the host for the events. He's got this amazing house. Uh, he's an awesome host. We do all the food and everything. And it's, it's, it's you know, it's all fully, um, all in event. Um, and uh, he'd done some work. He'd done a project. Uh, he's, he's a creative director. Um, or he's a consultant now, but he's he's um, a creative guy. One of those guys who can take a bunch of crazy ideas and whittle it down to like a sentence. Um, <laughs> he's amazing at that. And um, that was something that he'd, he'd explored. So with the, with the subtext being no man is an island, mm. uh, that we are often feeling very isolated and and um yeah that, that's that's where it came from it is not on the Isle of Man uh it's in it's uh near Milton Keynes right so how do people it find looks- out about it what's what's the what's the website address I'll put it in the show notes which by the yeah, way if you're thanks. watching this on YouTube show notes will be in the description but it's always www.beabringhuman.com slash the number of the episode which will be, I believe, one, two, six for today. I better check that, but it's in the show notes. It's in the yeah. show notes. But t- tell us just so you can hear it aud- auditably. Yeah, so it's the Isle of Man, all one word, dot org. Great. That's the, that's the website for the retreat. The Isle of Man dot org. And if we want to get in touch with you about your general coaching work, you know, where you just work, say you work with executives, you work with um different different walks of life men and women so uh, how do they find out more about you there so uh the easiest way would be my website which is just my name so nathaniel dunn.co.uk uh or .com.au i've got both domains um uh or find me on social media i'm i'm pretty active on facebook i'm becoming more active on linkedin um, but those two platforms you can find me too yeah great so i will put all of those social media links into the show notes we can get hold of you there or go search your name i'm sure they'll find you um nathaniel thanks so much for coming on the show it's been a great chat and, yeah thank uh, you went I, into some interesting places yeah i think i think there's more to go i think i'm gonna have to have you back on at some point to sort of go there's some territories i wanted to get into we haven't had time for today uh but, but fantastic um if if there was like one sentence you wanted to leave people with, what would that be? Uh, it's all about understanding yourself and it is not selfish to do that work. Nice. Brilliant. Thanks so much, mate. I shall speak to you soon. All right, mate. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for listening. If you've enjoyed this show, I'd love you to do me a solid and tell someone about it. They can find us on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, and most other podcast platforms. Plus, if you visit the website, www.babrillinghuman.com, you can share the show notes to social media and make my day. Also, make sure you hit that follow button. And if you haven't yet downloaded the MPA process sheet, head on over to joelyoungmpa.com and get your free copy today. Big love and see you next time.